Hey guys, it's episode 369 of the official podcast, a very special Christmas themed episode. You'll probably notice on the webcams right now, we're all wearing Christmas outfits. We've got Santa hats on, I've got a burlap sack full of gifts. There's so much going on right now. Can you hear the Christmas carols? I can hear the Christmas carols. It's three days out. None of that's true, by the way. I'm not wearing any clothes. I mean, I'm wearing clothes, but no Christmas clothes. But anyway, how are you guys going? Hey, doing great, Jackson. I love the enthusiasm. Yes, I appreciate that. The LARPing. We're a little late. We should have pre-recorded the Christmas episode so it releases on Christmas. Not do it afterwards. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I've had my fill of Christmas. Thank you. That was overwhelming yeah. this year. Is this, I never realized is this your how first big Christmas? and bold Americans celebrate it. No, it's not my first Christmas. Germans celebrate it as well. But this year we celebrated it at my like wife's wealthy uncle's place. And that mango was all out. It was like three straight days of 25 person dinner parties. And just so much commotion and just eating. Needless that to say, seems I'm like- stuffed again. Are you nervous around new people? Because that sounds like a lot of like new faces to mingle with for you. Um, yeah, I am. But, you know, I mean, if there's a little bit of booze and if I can get my foot in with like one topic, then I'm fine. And if there's any yeah, more, like, people are very yeah. chill now. They were all very cool. So I didn't have any issues. Yeah. What's your strat? Just like get boozed up and then find like someone with slightly similar interest to you and then just try to find something that you can both talk no. about. There's no strat. This isn't like you picking up women at the bar or something. You know, you just sit there and then an old lady will start talking to you about, oh, so what's your name? Oh, and where you're from Germany? And that that is like conversation material enough. Oh, true. For yeah, Americans. Yeah. They they literally get fascinated by, oh, you're not from like fucking butt this fuck area. Kentucky tell me more I really want to sit down and listen to this yeah so they usually just have a ton of questions that is a super easy mm-hmm. intro for you definitely I could see that with me it's like it's like family events always end up like they ask me about the podcast and stuff but then I feel like such a fucking jerk because I'm always like <laughs> I, I, don't make me talk about the podcast I don't want <laughs> I don't want to talk about the podcast no, the I just feel like such a like a wet blanket. Um, yeah, so that's always yeah, awkward. That like new events and stuff like that. Because I don't know how to explain it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Australians talk about dick and balls. Christmas? Christmas? Yeah, it is fucking... Yeah. Uh, we, we, we watch all the same movies you guys do. Like, I watch Die Hard. And it's the saddest time of the year, potentially, because we see all these movies, all these Christmas movies, and they're so beautiful, like s- snow environments, like snow everywhere, sitting yeah, by a camp, say, uh, not a camp, by, like that. a fireplace, like a fireplace and shit like that, toasting marshmallows, all that nice festive shit. And then we, we're like on fire again at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it, the country is burning down. Like we had, we had such severe storms in my state over the Christmas like week where uh, a, a, a city nearby has been out of power for about a week now. <laughs> so people didn't have power on Christmas day and it was like cyclonic so guys, winds and stuff like that. It was awful. Do you guys lean into it? Like does your Santa wear a swimming suit? And stuff? Yeah. 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 All the advertisements of uh, like Santa over here. He's like fucking shirtless. He's beer guts hanging out. He's wearing boardies, <laughs> That's a like kind of cool. board, board shorts. It's cool, yeah. I, I dig it. I, I mean, Christmas is still such a fucking great time of the year anyway. It's just an excuse to be around family and friends and have, uh, you know, a few drinks, have some fun. I love Christmas. Does it mm-hmm. in the winter get Anyways. cold enough to snow there at all? In parts of Australia, right? Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in some parts, Probably like there's a few fire. like... <laughs> no there's Does a few mountains like down in like new south wales and tasmania like the island the, the little island thing that everyone forgets about at the bottom of australia that kind of gets snowy but like n- not really for long and not to the same degree as like america i i've never seen snow i've never seen snow before in my life oh ever. i've only seen oh, it twice that, okay that is sad i know it's so sad it i really want to see snow now. it's not it's not that cool jackson i'll tell you right now well, have you guys seen a like a, a bushfire envelop your local area? <laughs> that sounds so much cooler. <laughs> yeah, that's so much better. That's a like that's magic. Snow's just cringe. Yeah. 
<laughs> they walk up to the forest and just like make schmores. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, let's have a yeah. camp out. That's such oh, a by weird the way. fucking concept that you would celebrate Christmas in the summer. I, I'm just trying to fathom that idea. Well, it's not like we have a choice. Christmas is the same time every year for yeah. everyone. Right. It's just the way the, the way it landed. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's it's not nice. It is so fucking hot, man. It is like, at the moment, it's 30 degrees Celsius at 1 a.m. at night, which is like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I think, at 1 a.m. So imagine it during the day. Oh, well, you guys, you guys are in Florida. You know what fucking humid heat is like. Sweltering oh, heat. yes, we do. It's fucking awful, awful. But still, Christmas good. I don't want to be a fucking Debbie Downer. I, I hate when people like say, "Oh, I hate Christmas." I don't know how you could hate Christmas. I don't know how you could ever hate no. Christmas. It's it's just a nice excuse to like hang out with family. And if you I don't mean, if like your family, family. Get it. yeah. But like, I feel like Christmas is what you make of it, right? Like, find find some like minded friends or whatever. Like. Go find a new family. <laughs> as easy as that sounds, I don't know. It just it just sounds miserable not liking Christmas. What do you guys do, I know, Andrew? Where people grinch out. Sorry. What did I do for Christmas? Yeah. Well, I had COVID, so I laid on my couch and I wished for death. This is your first time getting COVID, isn't it? It is. You can put me on the board now. You used to brag quite heavily about never getting COVID. That's right. And then I went on a plane and I even wore a mask in the airport and I wore a mask on the airplane. And then I came home and everything was fine. And then sometime later I had COVID and I went, oh God, Uh how did this happen? Uh Oh, that'll do it. Yeah, it was not good. (laughs) Okay, great. I was sick a second time, and this one overlapped on Christmas. Got to miss my Christmas family celebration, so that was rad. Uh, Spent my Christmas on my couch, and I've been sleeping on and off for however long. It's been winter wonderland magical. It's just like the TV specials. Like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, that whole Christmas like claymation special. It played out yep. in my living room with me coughing into a tissue. Yeah, you had yourself a holly jolly Christmas Hallmark experience, brother. I did. I looked outside and it snowed in Florida. It was a Christmas miracle. And I said, wow, the season is real. I think I'll stay right here in bed. And I did. <laughs> You're being sarcastic, right? That doesn't snow in Florida? Believe it or not, Jackson, I'm being sarcastic. I mean, I don't know if snows or not. How would I know? No. No, it been didn't snow. Winter. No. Oh, well, it's up to be you. Try not to get yeah. COVID next time, pussy. I'll try. Thank you for the advice. Do you say, what did I do for Christmas? Charlie, how about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your Christmas. Uh, I didn't do anything special. I just went over to my parents and ate with family. That was really about it. I didn't... But you had a good one? Yeah, it was nice. I mean, I always enjoy it. I got nothing too special to report on there. <laughs> because everyone's Christmas was boring. I I guess I kind of witnessed them bonded. So my uncle, my uncle's place is very big. Uncle-in-law, rather. And he's a successful lawyer with two dogs. And he was babysitting his neighbor's pit bull. And my wife hates pit bulls, probably more than you, Jackson, even. And ironically, that's the one I bonded the most with because I ju- he's a puppy. And he's like, I think the neighbor said that he's like six months or something. So all he wants to do is play. Um, so we're all playing and playing and playing and playing until we have one of those pull ropes for dogs, you know. So I'm pulling to, uh, pay, playing tug of war with the thing. And one of the other dogs comes in. And I forget that one's breed, but it's just a normal dog. And kind of, I think, two years old or something. He grabs the other end of the rope. And they are kind of tugging on each end while I'm holding it in the middle. 
And then I, something happened. And at this point, we're all like a couple of drinks in, and something happened, and the pit bull snapped and just started attacking the other dog. And all of a sudden, I, everything is a little hazy, but I found myself on top of a fucking pit bull trying to hold it down while my uncle's finger is in its mouth. And my uncle managed to yank it out and then hold it under the faucet for a while. But then it was a whole thing of, oh, is it vaccinated? And I think he has diabetes, which apparently means that your blood is very bad at clotting. I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah. that was fun. So, was okay, fun so wait, did so you, he to, did, so you, you got bit by the pit bull? No, my uncle did. Uncle-in-law. Oh, right. And he's oh, like 60 okay. years old, diabetic. And at that point, he was also the only one still sober. So he had to drive himself to the hospital and back. And his thumb <laughs> was just bandaged for the rest of Christmas. <laughs> he had to ban that pit bull from the house. And again, ironically, that fucking pit bull loves me. Yeah, you were saying you were saying in our private messages that you he was really cute. And I just want to make the was, note, yeah. good, good pit bull owners, completely fine. Bad pit bull owners, bad. Like, can't get more no, he has a that. very good owner, but the thing can yeah. still snap, you know? It's just, it's a yeah. pit bull. What can you do? This is like a hey, fucking hey, open and shut case of a pit bull being a pit bull, sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah. The prey drive. <laughs> oh, I, you know what I found out, Jackson? So, my wife just keeps sending me these propaganda pieces from our slash band pit bulls. Like every day, here's the pitbull attack of the day, Kaya. <laughs> As if I need convincing. <laughs> but what I didn't know, and this is very funny, apparently they call them nanny dogs. And mm -hmm. they have yeah, created yeah, this yeah. mythology that pitbulls originally came to be because they were bred to watch babies. <laughs> and we took that. They actually believe this. I'm not shitting you. They oh, made, they you. even like Photoshop news articles and shit. And if you actually look into it, it's completely made up because, you know, the thing isn't called a nanny dog. It's called a pit bull. <laughs> it's what you throw in the pits to be the bull. <laughs> like shred animals. It sounds like something someone who hates kids made up <laughs> as a lie to get people to put <laughs> pit bulls around kids. But it's like something you would breed if you wanted to reduce children, not nanny them. It's like, that actually made me burst out laughing that they call them nanny dogs. Like literally of all the breeds. But that was a ironic moment. I have seen videos as well, and I've, I have had pleasant experiences with pit bulls, but I've seen videos of like, really cute videos of like pit bulls playing with kids and stuff like that. So I'm sure they exist and stuff, but it's, I've seen a lot of other videos as well where it's just like, holy shit. Yeah, it's just rolling the dice. You oh, yeah, never really sure. know about the temperament. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And then one lady at one of the dinners. Wait, 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 Sorry. wait, wait. Before we move, before we continue on with that though, Kaya, I just wanted to say, mm. I want to spread a bit of Christmas cheer and joy. I was going to say this at the start, but then we got sidetracked with nothing really somehow, but still, uh, I wanted to like, can you guys in chat or I mean, uh, in the comments, Leave behind, leave a comment saying what your favorite Christmas memory is. And I'll choose five different people from the comments and, and reach out to you and send you $100 for, uh, for Christmas, New Year's celebration. I did it for our Patreon people and I've done it for buying people on comments, Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, buy comments. <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah, do that. I'm spreading Christmas cheer. Well, he's making video wanna, games. Wanna, Conceal it a little bit. He <laughs> literally just like, I'll pay make, you for comments. <laughs> no, no, no! It's nothing like that. You, yeah, um, I just want to throw that out there, just to spread a bit of Christmas cheer. Yeah, I, but I we need a way that. to get the money to you. So put your personal PayPal bank information <laughs> in the comment as well. <laughs> you send and me the money card. first, just so I can. And Jackson will double the it. Transaction process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do. <laughs> you sent me two hundred. I send you hundred. Put the Bitcoin Deal. address in the description, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. It'll be below. Send me the money first just to make sure that everything's smooth and then you'll get it back. All right, yeah. All right. So, sorry, Kaya, continue. I just wanted to get that in the first part of the episode. Oh, I have no idea what I was going to say, but... Something about getting drunk with an old woman. Yeah, no, it wasn't just with her, but, you know, you will encounter pit bull defenders in the wild and you have to kind of pick and choose your fights because this was when... So my uncle's brother, I think, he owns a restaurant, like an Italian place, and he closed it on Christmas Eve, I believe, to just host dinner for all 25 of us. And he just said, anything you see in this restaurant, you can have. Just grab whatever you want out of the fridge. And was he whatever. trying to fuck you? What, what, why is he going all out? My, he's just, it's 
Christmas. What? Where did you get that Jackson's from? He's people just a... tend to do nice things for each <laughs> yeah. other. This is crazy. No, I know, no. but he didn't just tell me that. He told everyone that Jackson. <laughs> well, even if he did just tell you that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Kaya left out the next part of the story where he said, Kaya, you can have anything you want, and then I want you to fuck me. Uh, I want you to <laughs> fuck me on my restaurant table. That's why I'm doing this, Kaya. No, he's just a he's a very generous man who just likes throwing lavish Christmas likes parties. Turkish Jackson. Men. That's about it. He just loves <laughs> cooking. He used to be 400 pounds and lost it all. And that was pre Ozempic, by the way. Yeah, uh, but so he's impressive. still dealing with the fallout. So him and his brother just love cooking. But anyway, we're all eating and drinking, and it's like a packed fucking restaurant. And one of the ladies, I don't know how it even came up. Oh, they were telling the story of him getting attacked by the pit bull, and one of the ladies just started fervently defending the thing, saying, No, we had a pit bull, and he was the sweetest thing. And I, I glanced at my wife, like, Don't do it. I know, I know your instincts. You're, you're gonna start <laughs> shit. Don't do it. Pick and choose your, your wife's battles, gonna snap like a pit also, bull. I know, yeah. She also had like have a glass of wine. And my wife, she's such a lightweight, she can like look at a shot across the room and get drunk. So I was like <laughs> holding her hand and saying, Not the time and place, just let her, <laughs> let her have it. <laughs> yeah, literally. I was literally saying, just let it go. It's fine. <laughs> You've got to pick and it. choose your battles. Did you hold her down and rub her belly to calm her down and put a treat between <laughs> her jowls? <laughs> no, I just assured her. But no, everybody was so cool. There was also this um, 94, 94 year old gentleman, either 94 or 98, I don't remember. And we got talking a lot. And my wife, he asked if he could have, what is that drink called when it's like a glass of, it's half bourbon and half water. And he really liked that. And my wife kept like bar backing him because, you know, he was like, oh, could you get me one of these? And she said, of course. And next day, next morning, he was so grateful. He came up um, to her and me and he gave us two coins from 1972 and 1978. Two silver coins. And I thought, oh, that is cool. Thank you very much. Until I actually looked at the coin and I looked it up. So apparently these were minted for, by Dwight Eisenhower. Uh, to celebrate Apollo 11. So on the tail side of it, you have a bald eagle landing on the moon, which is just the <laughs> coolest fucking shit. Holy this is the most American cool. thing I may have received so far. How much is it worth, though? Oh, I, apparently not much, but that doesn't even oh. matter. I just think it's so fucking cool that I have a coin from 1978 that just has a bald eagle landing on the goddamn moon. Yeah, that is pretty fucking cool. I mean, what, what a sweet man as well. That was very nice. Oh yeah, every like I said, everybody was super duper nice. Hmm. Lovely. People are nice to you when you're nice to them. At our <laughs> Christmas event, um, my mum, who is de- like allergic to prawns, she won't stop eating them though. She she just fucking was shoveling <laughs> prawns down her throat throughout the lunch and then we had to end the lunch early because she had an allergic reaction to the things she knew she was allergic to. <laughs> Was she trying to commit suicide? <laughs> <laughs> no. Suicide by prawn? Why would she keep eating it? Why would you let her? Because she likes it. She likes the prawns. She, uh, she, they, they taste good, apparently. That's, that's your mom, pain. right, Jackson? Yeah. yeah. What is it with moms and shellfish? I don't Have know, you ever man. noticed I that? Get it. L- like, everyone's yeah. mom goes nuts for fucking crab and lobster and prawns and shrimp. They can't get enough of that shit, man. To the point where, even if they're allergic, they'll just eat themselves into anaphylactic shock. Like, it's fucking insane. I don't get it. It, My mom's the same way. She goes nuts over crab like that. If you eat it that much, shouldn't your immune system at some point get used to it? You would think so. Just by, like, sheer exposure. Yeah, exposure therapy. I feel like at some point she's going to become immune to it if she keeps shoveling the prawns like that. I think, you know, yeah, maybe now, but I think, so she's always been a big prawn eater, uh, and then the allergy developed late, later, like it's a new allergy. Oh, she ate too many of it, <laughs> her body got yeah, tired maybe. of it. <laughs> They're fighting back. <laughs> you gotta put her in that state again and say, fight it, mom, fight it, you're getting stronger. Well, I think that's what she was trying to do. <laughs> you won't stop eating them, it's not the first time as well. She's, I don't understand, if I was a new, like... Even if it was like, you know, uh, lactose intolerance or something, I would know to stay away from that shit. I would not eat it because it would put me in a bad physical state. She has a literal allergy to this thing and it tastes so good to her that she still eats it. 
And then she's surprised when she has an allergic reaction to it. She's like, I thought this time would be different. Would Is yeah. there any food that you would eat even if you had the same reaction to it? No, I don't think so. I, I think I'd be strong enough to like put away put it away if I uh, figured out that I was allergic to it. Like I can't think of well, anything. Can't you just like carry an EpiPen and just shovel the prawns in her mouth and then just hit herself with a shot? So I don't think it was that kind of I don't think it was that kind of allergic reaction where it's like you can't breathe. Or well, maybe it was, but it's more like rashes and stuff like that. I mean, wouldn't an antihistamine still work? Because I, like, I mean, if you can't give it up at that point, just manage symptoms, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like how wrong. hard was she going? Was she like gurgling up prawns towards the end of it? Oh, they all do. They all do. They all go so <laughs> hard. Spitting up the tails. As she's talking. I don't get it. I, they, they they act like prawn is like <laughs> the only thing to eat. It's like every every uh, family event, it was always prawns, and I just don't like them. I hate prawns. Like the taste. No, of me them. neither. Me neither. I, I feel like fish it. is the only seafood I like at this point. It's like, I don't know why everybody is so goddamn hardcore into shrimp. And then I bite into mm. it and it's like this gunky, gummy thing. Do they call like oh. the lobster looking things? I, I don't know if they're lobsters or not, but they, they call them bugs over here. Do you guys have bugs? <laughs> like shellfish, kind of like large sea shellfish? Bugs, I guess. I mean, aren't they technically bugs? I, I don't know. We call them bugs. I'm not sure what they actually are because I'm not a seafood eater. But they're the most disgusting looking things and the way that people like crack into their shells to eat them and suck out all the fucking insides, it just always makes me feel sick. That sounds like crawdads. Do you guys have anything specific to Australia? Because you have so much wildlife. I'd, I feel like starfish or something would be on your plate. Um, I, 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 don't, eat, I don't eat seafood, so I don't know. Did you have witchetty grubs at your Christmas? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? <laughs> No, no witchetty grubs. I haven't seen a witchetty grub in so long. There's always time. Yeah, I don't know what these are. Look up Morton Bay Bug, though, and tell me what they are in your country. Morton, Morton Bay, Bay Bugs. Bug. Yeah, here. Oh. Oh. It's, um... It's a thing. Little lobster. Are they just little lobsters? Yeah, this, but your your Morton Bay bug looks more like some kind of shoe lobster. Yeah, so uh, wait, is it unique to Australia? You guys don't have something like that? Like, specifically like that? That looks like a really dumb lobster. Like an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, we have, I mean, it's kind of just like a lobster tail, almost. They are yeah. lobsters found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Okay, so, so it is specific. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. It kind of does look like the tail. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the tail. Yeah, so maybe it's like a more. Maybe it's just a cheaper version of lobster then, and that's why like everyone loves it over here. If they're just like small. Ah, lobster minus. Oh, yeah, maybe that's what it is, because they're just like tail sized or whatever. Like each person can have their own Morton Bay bug for lunch instead of. Because like lobsters uh, are massive, right? That's something like you share together. They've got to change that name. That is so fucking awful sounding. Eating a Morton Bay bug. <laughs> well, so I, I think it's a type of bug. Morton Bay is a place in Australia. Yeah, but still, you can change the uh, name of it. Like it's not like they we call yeah, our I mean, lobsters after where they're from. Like I'm eating a, you know. Tampa clear water lobster bug or whatever. <laughs> you might. There might be like lobster specifically for like different regions in America. Maybe there is. I don't really eat lobster, but that's we wouldn't call it a bug. The problem isn't naming it after a place. Yeah, yeah. We have foods named after places. The problem is calling it a bug. Mm -hmm. Like people oh, are going to want to eat a Morton yeah. Bay bug. Doesn't sound well. Good. You're wrong. They they fucking demolish the shit. And also at this, I, I agree with you though, Andrew. I've made this point so many times. <laughs> I feel like these like lobsters and crustaceans and and like prawns and shit are literally just underwater bugs or insects, and that's well, why are. I don't I don't like eating them. Yeah, just, it's are. like I just imagine eating spiders. It's like the same thing. Ew. I mean, you probably would over in Australia. No, not no, no, no. Why don't they just call there's it a no Morton nutrient. Bay lobster? That sounds so much better. <laughs> yeah, for real. Because <laughs> it's not it's a, a lobster. Terrible it's marketing. No, it is, is it a lobster? It is literally it's a, slip a lobster. lobster. It is. It's a lobster. So on Wikipedia, it says it's a species of slipper lobster. So it is a 
type of lobster. Yeah, I don't yes, know why they call it a like Morton that. Bay lobster. That sounds so much better. Imagine you go to a seafood restaurant. Would you rather have the Morton Bay lobster or the Morton Bay bug? I can tell you what the Australians would prefer. <laughs> you guys are weird. Because you just do oh, weird God, that shit. That looks disgusting. That star just posted. It's like yeah, a cockroach on your plate. Ugh. I don't Ugh. get it. I don't get why people eat. It doesn't even look cooked. <laughs> okay, let's switch oh, gears man. to the a nicer and the obvious topic we, I think, skipped. What did you guys even get for Christmas? Anyone get anything cool? Uh, just clothes. I got um, COVID. Yeah, clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Santa gave you that terrible coal. Yeah. Coal 19. <laughs> Oh. Santa came down the chimney and just fucking coughed in Andrew's face. <laughs> I guess when we're at our age, we don't get anything fancy or cool anymore. It's just like, because we have on our, our own income, so if you actually yeah. need something, you can just buy it yourself. So the only yeah. things that we ever ask for is stuff that we're kind of too lazy to get, like socks and pants. Like, yeah, I don't want to go sock shopping. Can I just have socks? I, I ask for nothing. I, I would prefer family keep their money at this point. And stuff like that. I yeah, haven't, like, sure, I, mean, yeah, I haven't asked for anything for Christmas in quite a while either. There's just yeah, mm -hmm. really nothing I years. want. If you're gonna get me something, mm -hmm. give me a pair of socks. And it's it's that's enough, good enough. Although, I don't want anything. like, family is great because I'll say that to them, but then they do come up with some like really thoughtful gifts that are just like really you know sweet and yeah, touching that I would have never obviously. And thought so about. do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's that's what Christmas gifts are about. It's not stuff that you like, mm -hmm. <laughs> deeply want or whatever. It's like stuff that is surprising at the end of the day. Like, oh shit, I didn't even know I wanted that. That's so thoughtful. Yeah, those are the nicer gifts. I think once you're like, I don't know, 17, 18 or so, you kind of grow out of the, I want an iPhone 15 Pro stage, you know? And you guys remember yeah. that, that uh, genre of videos on YouTube? Or like mostly girls will cry about the phones they got. It's probably still a thing on TikTok. Probably. Or the presents oh, it they absolutely. Got, they were... Wait, did you not see the video? Oh, fuck. What was it? There was a recent TikTok video. Very recent. A, uh, a girl, it was a p birthday party and she didn't get the gift that she wanted. And she threw the biggest tantrum ever. She looked older than like 16 though. I'm pretty sure. So it, that that type of content is still alive and well. And I could absolutely see it. Wait, was it a Taylor Swift? I think she got the wrong like Taylor Swift shoes or something, or some kind of shoes that you're, weren't you're mis like the yeah, you're misremembering shoes. this dreadfully. No. Yeah, she yeah. was so happy she almost threw yeah. up. That's the video you're she, seeing. It was Billie Eilish shoes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 that is the opposite. Yeah, she was like she had cult like you know when like old ladies cry in front of the Virgin Mary uh, that sort of like reaction. To a pair of fucking shoes made in China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Oh, God. I saw. So, Jackson, do you know what a white elephant is? I feel like Charlie and Andrew do, would. I actually don't. Uh, it's. Uh, I do. Is that no? a Black okay, episode? Like, no. Well, it could be. I don't know. Um, so after everybody gives each other their gifts, you can also have like a little, almost like a party game type of gift giving where you pick a gift at random out of the pile and then the next person picks one and then you can uh, steal each other's gifts. It's a little more complicated than that, but it can be fun. So I got like a little Bluetooth speaker that I had to pretend I was really, really into because it had LED lights and everybody looked at me like, oh, isn't that cool? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then somebody stole it from me. A 15-year-old boy took it from me and I was like, thank God, I get to pick another gift. And I got a microwave popcorn maker. But all that to oh, say, yeah. one of the girls, um, there were like a bunch of 16, 19-year-old girls and one of them got an Alexa. And I swear to you, like, three or four of them soy-faced for, like, five seconds straight. They were <laughs> so into that shit. And my uncle has this, this huge house. And it, the thing is, in every room, there is an Alexa. Every room is fucking bugged. And I actually had to toss it out of our guest room because I just felt uncomfortable sleeping next to that thing, constantly listening. <laughs> and they're so into that stuff. <laughs> it's, just, it's everywhere. And I felt paranoid the whole time staying there. Did you leave? <laughs> Did you leave the Alexa in the hallway? 
<laughs> he threw it no, in the garbage. Just, I left it in the... He has like a man cave giant basement and one of the adjacent rooms was our guest room and I just put it on the desk in front of the couch. Right. Yeah. I, uh, my uh, wife unplugged it and said, they're good enough. I said, no. I, I mean, those things have batteries. Toss that thing out. I don't want Alexa <laughs> watching us. Your wife's uncle was sitting in the secret surveillance room watching all the cameras <laughs> and he went, camera seven is offline. Kaya knows. <laughs> 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 no, it's not even worth it. Like the most that I've seen them use it was to set an oven timer. They just go, Alexa, set a timer for 30 minutes. <clears throat> <That's> <clears throat> or <what>? Alexa, skip <laughs> the song. It's like, what the fuck? Is that all it does? What? That is exactly what I do. I have an Alexa and literally the one thing I use it for is when I'm cooking, I set timers for food. That's it. That's the only thing I've ever used it for. <laughs> Just use right. your phone. Wait. What do you have it for? <laughs> well, if you're cooking, if you're cooking, it's super convenient to just say the command out loud instead of having to actually stop and put it in. I guess. I guess I'm just too paranoid. Don't, Don't your know. ovens have timers though? Yeah, yeah, but if you need multiple so timers, your phone. what do you do? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but like, is that worth it to have this entity just always recording everything that you say 24-7? Yes. I don't know. People like convenience, I guess. I don't. Yeah, absolutely. That's why every like 20 minutes I say a racial slur, so they have to censor it and throw out the transcript. And I don't have to worry. Yeah, except they don't censor Smart. it. You know, one of the oh, no. funniest tropes is whenever They're people go a to their... compilation of it. What is it? History.google.com. And they realize that there's like 10-year-old recordings of themselves jokingly saying the N-word at their Google Assistant. And they're like, what the fuck? Why do they still have this recording of me? It's like, yeah, because they recorded, dummy. <laughs> That's a fun experiment, yeah. by the way. Go to my... Was it history.com? History.google.com? But you can log in with your Google right account now. and you will... <laughs> Find every search that you've ever given to that thing, every voice command, it's just on record, on file, forever. Well, what do you want us to do about it, Kyle? So use your phone. I don't, what is the big deal? You can't pick up your phone and just hit the skip song button? <laughs> Why do you have to have a f bug in your house? If we go to history.google.com, it's going to have terabytes and terabytes of our information of the last 20 years. At that point, we may as well start using Alexa to make timers for our ovens or whatever. It's too, we're too far gone. We can't delete the history. Well, you can delete the history. I mean, it does let you delete it, especially if you just fib and say, hey, I'm a European citizen and under GDPR rules, you must delete this immediately. Or they also have convenient buttons. You can also turn off your search history. You can do things like turn off your Google search history so it doesn't learn from it and such to customize your recommendations. I don't know, man. Like, I know that's just me versus you guys on this one, I guess. But when I see that girl getting an Alexa, all I can think is like, that thing is going to, she's going to take that home and set it up. And from that moment on, it's going to listen and record everything. It's going to record when she's like fighting with her boyfriend. It's going to record when she's, you know, being intimate with her boyfriend and saying, dirty shit that she would be embarrassed to death if anyone ever heard it. She's gonna, it's gonna be recording her when she's crying on her friend's shoulder, confiding her deepest, darkest secrets and traumas to her. One day it's probably gonna record her baby's first words until he's also old enough to establish a profile on and socially manipulate into <laughs> being a customer. It's like, that is not worth it to me to have that much data recorded on me especially when you have hackers where they're gonna use data breaches to collect that data one day and extort me and my family members that's how I mean, you get I just don't, that's how your grandma gets ai calls saying that you were in a crash and you need money all right i just don't think you're thinking about this deeply enough we have we can have pinpoint accuracy on our oven timers yeah, <laughs> like, yeah and you can oh, you can skip songs so much faster <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> Ultimate power. It, it, it like saves a few seconds every so song skip, probably. Like, let's say two <laughs> seconds. And now you add those two seconds up each time you do it. There's so many seconds we get back, Kyle, in productivity. It's just, it's crazy. I can't not wait at the end of my of life, thanks to Amazon Alexa, I live an extra minute and a half. That's going to be fucking yeah. amazing. <laughs> it would be so, oh God, you know how depressing it would be if you had like an like at the end of a video game where they show you statistics, but at the end of your life, 
Yeah. So you saved two minutes because of the Alexa. Yeah, you you also wasted eight hours on the toilet. Uh, Fuck! I really want to see my stats. Oh man, I want to see my stats. Just stats in general. I would pour over my yeah. Stats you if I, if I could like you that. have stepped on two thousand eight hundred ants in your over your lifetime. You know that sort of stuff. Yeah, shit like that. Just yeah, like really minute stuff that's not important at all. I would love to see. <laughs> Well, I don't want you don't want to see the depressing stuff like oh you got dumped by seven women. <laughs> Just great. Oh god, yeah, there could be some really upsetting stats like how many women found you attractive and it's like four. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would be hilarious. It'd be yeah, it'd be like Pandora's box. I uh, mm-hmm. would you guys want to see a countdown timer of when you're gonna die over no. your head? Why would why would no. anyone want to see that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Prepare don't for it. So. <laughs> try to try to circumvent it somehow. Am I the only one who sees no. it, or well, does that's everyone just see it? That's Final Destination at that point. Yeah, it's like Final Destination. Yeah, and you're the only one that sees it, Andrew. Oh fuck! I wanted to be like, hey, look at this timer. I'm gonna die yeah, like, on this about time. It. Not today. <laughs> you could write it down on I, a piece of paper for them to see. But then well, again, how are you, are you gonna make them believe it? Yeah. What's the difference really? between you just saying it? <laughs> like, why would you have to write it down? Because if they see got... the timer, it convinces them it's real. They go, oh my god, he's not lying. No, but he's saying that he's just gonna write it down. That doesn't make it suddenly more believable. <laughs> <laughs> It would never be believable. No, babe. I I swear to you, I am gonna really die five minutes from now. Please, one last blowjob. And then you just, you know, fucking fall over and die. (laughs) The blowjob's that good? The blowjob's the thing that ended up No, she just tells you now. And then you die anyway. All right. No, I think it would be kind of cool because you could at least try to circumvent your own death. But maybe through the act of trying to circumvent it, maybe that's what caused you, you to die as well, so... Good old Probably determinism. A, yeah, double-edged sword. New year, new you. You don't want to go into 2024 with the same old unhealthy habits and mind frame, do you? I certainly don't. And that's why Fitbot is here to save the day yet again for our audience, for all you listeners. Think about it like this. You're not the healthiest you could be unless you're using your body. I love to get out, especially working on my computer all day, doing multiple podcasts now. So I love to get out when I can and move around and make sure my body is active in actually meaningful ways. After a workout or some cardio, I always find that um, life looks a little bit brighter and I feel happier inside. I know, crazy. It's seriously like hardwired into you. This is simple biological drive and instinct. That's why I call FitBod an essential tool in feeling better. Just like you have your workout essentials, that's your water bottles, knee braces, stuff like that that bolster your workout, you have FitBot as well. It's just as essential as all the others. Because FitBot is an easy-to-use workout app that makes planning workouts easy. It's so easy that even I can use it to supplement my own workouts. So if I can use it, you can too easily. It tracks your goals, fitness levels, and available equipment to make suggestions on how you can get to where you want, basically. I think that's probably my favorite part about the app since I have some home workout equipment so I can just input what I have and it'll give me some fantastic workouts that leave me feeling great at the end of it that I didn't even know existed. And it's so beginner friendly with over 1000 demonstration videos that'll show you proper form and how to safely work out so you'll have no questions or injuries after the matter. So if you're looking to get into workouts and you don't want to ask people for help, I get it by the way, that's always embarrassing. FitBod is the answer to your problem. It has all the information you need at your fingertips and the tools you need at your fingertips to get into shape quickly for the new year. FitBot has been supporting the show for a long time now and we couldn't be happier. This is an app we all stand by and think does an incredible job delivering a fantastic service for everyone. You can get 25% off your subscription or you can try the app for free right now to find out if it's the right fit for you by going to fitbod.me. M-E slash official. That's 25% off your subscription, or you can try the app for free right now at fitbod.me slash official. Links will be in the description. So seriously, I highly recommend you go check it out at the very least. I'd recommend this at full price. So it's a no brainer at 25% off. So go check it out if you're looking to start working out or if you want to bolster your workouts with an incredible essential tool. Thanks, Fitbod. And thank you 
for supporting the show by checking out Fitbod. It really does mean a lot. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. You guys want to switch away from Christmas and such and death? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that was like Christmas, but sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you guys know that China almost killed their gaming industry? Oh, I actually heard the basics about that, but I didn't look into it deep enough. So what happened? Well, China basically overnight banned gacha game mechanics. Like, they didn't outright say, like, explicitly say these and these and these games are banned now or say gacha games in general are banned, but they banned certain mechanics like rewards for logging on every day or rewards for playing a certain number of games every day or, you know, random loot boxes. They banned all of that shit. And apparently it wiped out like $80 billion of their industry. And fifty billion of that was Tencent. <laughs> I don't think Tencent is gonna be producing any movies anytime soon. Yeah, Tencent took a huge hit. But I don't know if this applies to foreign markets, though. So maybe they can still continue doing this shit in America, you know, in the rest of the world, and just not in China. Much like how TikTok isn't allowed in China, but their own version is. Did they not undo undo it all though? I thought I read somewhere that they were like they immediately regretted Did the they? decision. Let's I don't know see. what I thought I read. Because isn't Tencent like owned by the Chinese uh, government? I think any company that gets that big well? in China is owned by the yeah. Chinese government. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I, it yes. seems weird that they would kind of handicap themselves. <laughs> but I don't know. Communism, the communist it just party. says that they're considering Weird. revising it, according to investors. Mm. So they're trying to appease investors? Yeah. It's- I mean, you know, when you lose $80 billion overnight, that tends to ruffle some feathers, I would imagine, in some powerful circles. I would be a little mad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if you came to me and said, Kaya, you can continue podcasting, you just can't speak. Well, you know. It's kind of a shitty rule. Maybe think about that <laughs> one more time. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of like the uh, relationship Australia has had with <laughs> video games over the last like 30 years. There was a, like a long, long period of time between like the 90s and the uh, early 2010s where we didn't have an adult rating for video games, like no, nothing over like MA um, for mature audiences. So any kind of game with any kind of drug use or violence or anything was immediately banned and we wouldn't be able to get like a lot of the Grand Theft Auto, Saints Row because it had a dildo yeah. bat. And then there's certain games like Fallout that had to get like specific Australian versions to remove like drug use in them and shit like that to be able to be released in Australia. And it's just crazy to me that this is such a large fucking industry and governments still don't know how to like interact with it. It's it's like no, not across at all. the board. It's so bizarre. It's so so confusing. What do you guys have a mature rating now? Yeah, we got the R rating now, but we still get games banned for okay. some reason. You know what I saw? Kept seeing. Uh, well, did we talk about this? Like when the GTA Six trailer dropped, or briefly before that, people were sharing videos from the prior GTAs of, and I think it was a video from GTA Four where the guy walks into a clinic and just starts shooting the NPCs. Yeah, we talked and about that. I saw literally thousands yeah. of people. Huh? We did talk about we that. And about people it. were like having outrage about it. Like, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Yeah. So, Touching in a sense, bells. governments actually were successful in instilling this in the next generation of like, no, no, this is way too hardcore for mainstream consumption. We have to ban this. Yep. It's like, what, what, what the fuck do you even do at GTA 6 at this point where like kids apparently don't even know you can shoot the NPCs for fun? Do they just do online races now? No, kids, probably. Are, kids still kids still probably do it. It's the fucking adults now that uh, constantly have to like talk about issues online, making up their own issues. That uh, look at this and then go, okay, let's. This is what we're gonna harp on about for a bit. I don't think it's children. I really don't. It's children are, right. are completely fine. Know. Children are completely fine with like still running over NPCs in GTA. That's all they do. All right, I hope so. Just have some fun. It's a video game. Just have fun. Yeah. (laughs) I hope my kids are experiencing violence. If they're not, I'm going to have an issue with it. Oh my God, I can't believe they did this. 
It's like the same gen. <laughs> it's got to be the same people that like nag you to be polite to an AI and shit. Fuck you. Doesn't yeah. exist. Just have fun. Also, on that topic, Sony lo- no longer calls games with a budget of one hundred million dollars as AAA games, and now They're calls them medium, medium budget, budget games. Yeah. That is insane. Is everything gonna be like this now where every movie costs 500 million bucks in five years to develop and every game costs like a billion bucks in 10 years to develop? Pretty much, yeah. Every game that isn't indie. It's like a, it's, it's, it's Marvel blockbusters, but there's still like a bunch of movies that come out for smaller scale budgets. Not, and I mean, I mean like AAA well. movies. Yeah, they're, they're not all gonna be like that, Jackson, but it's also not Marvel. The It's not exclusive to Marvel doing $100 million budgets. Fucking Moonfall had a $100 million budget. <laughs> Well, yeah, Moonfall true. was a medium tier movie, I guess. Now, no, it's anything <laughs> under a hundred mil, ridiculous. so it classifies as a triple A. And God damn it, it's the full experience. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I think it's worse in the video games industry though than movies personally. Um, and it's yeah, it's getting bad, Kaya. These companies need to reel in their budgets, but I don't know. Is it is it the audience's fault or is it the company's fault? Uh, it's you, your fault. Uh, if you want my opinion on it, I think it's the company's fault. Yeah, I do. Okay, why? Sell me on your uh, your opinion. Because they are so risk averse that they're just going to keep taking these giant franchise, that, like Assassin's Creed. I think is the perfect fucking example. They don't really do anything. They mm-hmm. just keep doing it, and it's an expensive process to keep doing because it's a massive team. They have to keep a salary for for a couple of years. And they have to keep upping, like, maybe the graphics or something. So they have to keep investing and, yep, scaling it up. And they have to make each one just slightly better than the last one in certain areas. And to do that still requires a huge team, a huge salary, and massive marketing dollars. Instead Mm -hmm. of just taking a chance on, like, a $10 to $20 million game. Yeah, I I see what you mean. I feel like it is a bigger risk, though, continuously... um continuously stretching the budget no they have so much financial data on what sells True. and how much exactly it sells as opposed to the big question mark of a, a new ip hmm. but at some point it does become unsustainable yep and we're getting to that point i've said that for like i don't know probably like six months now i think it's getting to the point where it is going to be completely unsustainable yeah because there's no way that you can make the budget back at these kinds of prices, or there's no way that you can reasonably expect to anyway. So th- then th- that risk is reintroduced, and you're back at square one, and you may as well be just making $10 million. Yeah, games. and not only that, it's the time it takes. Multiple years for some of these games. Assassin's Creed, not so much. They can pump that shit out every like year and a half or so. But for some of the other massive $100 yeah. million dollar budget games, we're talking like fucking five or six years. I do think a lot of these companies have a lot of bloat as well, though. So that much. They need to get a better handle on because there's mm-hmm. uh, certain games that come out on very lean employee counts that are still like incredibly good. And then you've got other studios with thousands of employees and you just don't see the results of that usually. Uh, I, f- oh, I think yeah. once you get a certain amount of like headcount, it just the employee count alone becomes unsustainable to make them all work efficiently. So there's, there's a sweet spot that the video game industry hasn't found. And then once in a while you have those indie games that just blow everything out of the water. I just imagine how mm-hmm. hard they must be seething like in the board of directors room where you know Lethal Company is made by one guy and overwhelmingly yeah. positive. And then you have Starfield, which I think I was overwhelmingly bad or something. <laughs> Apparently it has yeah. pretty bad <laughs> yeah, reviews on now on Steam officially. Yeah. Man. People are sick of it. Which what what happened with that anyway? I I get it. Uh, like it really doesn't have the same staying power as any other Bethesda game because is it just too outdated now? The engine. Yeah, it's like a game from 2010. It really is. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. they really didn't innovate. So say it same again. Same game, just a different show. You agree with Charlie? I I agree. I wait. I I agreed with you at the time as well. I just didn't think it was very important to my personal enjoyment of the game, and I did mm. enjoy the game. But I completely agree with you that it is basically the same game as Skyrim, just now, and in a different universe. But yeah, I can see. I can definitely see why it's mostly negative uh, currently. But again, I enjoyed it mm-hmm. personally. I'm just gonna say that I enjoyed it personally, and you'll never play it again. 
I won't. Unless it's an expansion or something, which there probably will be. But, like, I don't think every game needs to be, uh, like, me coming back every week to play it. Like a live service game. It doesn't, but with Bethesda, like that. that's, like, one of its big things. Like, Skyrim still has people playing it, like, and making mods for it and doing cool shit for it. Well, I think that's I think that's because of mods, right? Mods. Well, mostly. yeah, but e- even still, outside of mods, mods, it's a game that you can endlessly replay. Nobody's fucking replaying Starfield. I agree. People yeah. are grandfathered, and it's people that started in whenever that game came out, and they just never wanted to stop playing. It's, you know, like, people still play Worms Armageddon. But if you tell those same people, hey, we Worms have a new Worms games. game now, they're like, well, why would I? I have Armageddon already. It's the same thing. I, I can just play Skyrim. Why would I feel, play Skyrim but in space? I don't care. Yeah. But then you look at, like, uh, I know we've, we've talked to, about this game a lot, and everyone has Baldur's Gate 3 like that's a game that I can definitely see people coming back oh, to constantly oh, for, sure. for the next 10 years to oh, play new yeah. playthroughs yeah like it is just so insane uh yeah th- th- that's <laughs> the direction the video games industry needs to go it is so fucking nice. I'm playing it again with my girlfriend my girlfriend who doesn't like video games at all really she doesn't play video games at all she's been begging me to continue playing Baldur's Gate 3 like she, she's she been wanting to play it which is just like such a rarity for video like I've never seen her talk about video games other than like Pokemon like that so that's fucking crazy I didn't that's think nice. that it would have like I didn't think it would, it's crazy I didn't think it would have like mass, mar- like mass market appeal like to a casual audience with how mechanically in depth it is because it is a pretty like you know mechanically dense game um, but yeah, she, she hopped right on board and she doesn't care that she doesn't understand what fucking like saving throws are or anything like that. She just loves the world, loves the characters, loves the freedom, loves doing whatever she wants to do in it. It's crazy. It's the presentation, man. I'm telling you, it's having cutscenes mm-hmm. instead of like 10 paragraphs of yeah. dialogue boxes. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Because when you're playing with your friends, nobody wants to sit there like, okay, everyone reading time, like you're doing home, like study hall together, right? Whenever you're talking to an NPC, instead you all just watch a funny cutscene. Yeah. Not necessarily yeah, funny, so but you know what? You get the point. It's just so much easier for regular people to get into that aren't necessarily and like D&D dorks. And it's got cock physics. They're, like the game perfected that kind yes. of like funny, know. you know, <laughs> funny little gameplay, you know, moments uh-huh. or elements that are just immediately like, yes, that's fucking incredible and awesome. Yeah. Great game. The game can't, great. can't, can't praise it enough. Such a good game. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, what were we talking about before I started talking Starfield. about Baldur's Gate 3? Oh we're yeah, damn. <laughs> Way to bring us back down. <laughs> yeah, shitting on Starfield. <laughs> before that, I mi- I, 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 Sony budgets and then China. Yeah, I was just going to say, Jackson, have you kept up with any of the Xbox uh, fan accounts that are, for some reason, constantly fighting Xbox's battles on Twitter? Well, yeah, they all, like, PlayStation's got it too, but yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, but Xbox has it in, like, the weirdest possible way. So, have you seen their response to all the Starfield stuff? Uh, no. Unsurprisingly, they think it's all a giant conspiracy from Sony fanboys to, like, bring down the beauty of Starfield and Xbox, shitting on its glory. What does that mean? I, brother, I couldn't fucking tell you. It is impossible to understand. job. Like their their mind works in mysterious ways when it comes to defending Xbox for some reason. I don't. Get I the saw point. them. Oh man, I I saw these Xbox accounts, the uh, fanboy accounts, posting uh, the the Wolverine leaked footages, oh, of yeah. footage, and then comparing it to fucking footage of Redfall, saying how much better Redfall was, and it's embarrassing that <laughs> that Sony's putting this out. It's oh man, it, it's, it's it's so fucking. St- It's fucking brain rotted. Like, I think those are probably like pound for pound the dumbest people on Twitter. To like you, like not only fight the console wars, but fight it so vehemently for no fucking reason is crazy. It's what fanaticism does, though. Like, (laughs) it's pretty straightforward. You see it on the other side too. Like, no, I'm not playing sides. They're both fucking stupid. I'm playing sides. I think I. I don't think PlayStation has it as bad. Actually, you know who doesn't have it that I, I don't see online as much? Nintendo. Nintendo. Yeah. I don't really see much Nintendo, like, stupid stupid shit like that. Like, most people disagree that Nintendo games are cool and then, like, kind of on their own kind of plane of existence. 
they're devoid of comparison to the other things. But yeah, Xbox fan. There was a nice period of time there where Xbox fan, like Xbox and PlayStation fans, weren't warring in the streets. But now it's like, well, that's because Xbox used to be a competitor in gaming. Now it's not. Like it, like it. It's, well, no. But then I, th- I would have thought back if that was the case, it would have been like more fanatical then. I'm talking um, between like 2014 and 2020. I think it's the opposite. I think it's when Xbox was the least competitive it's ever been. Even Xbox fans didn't have any like leg to stand on because no games were coming out. No exclusives were coming out. That's why it was so quiet. And now that there's kind of like they've at least got exclusives coming out, kind of. And there's like more PR behind it. Now Xbox fans are back back in the game. My least favorites are the Nintendo Sims who come out in defense of Nintendo's lawyers every single time there's like a dispute of oh, here's a Metroid fan game or here's an emulator that they're trying to shut down and then you'll have people going, yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't steal their IP. And those have to be hired by just Nintendo or something. I've never seen I don't that. Know, maybe I haven't really seen a just, ton of that either. You've never seen Nintendo Sims? Well, Nintendo no, Sims, really? like, there's, was, there's we definitely some of them, that. but I've never seen many times people be on the side of Nintendo's lawyers. That's usually like one of the most unanimously hated things they do. Mm. Uh, it's kind of... I think they're the same people who are just vehemently against uh, piracy in general. Like, oh, mm. you shouldn't steal from Netflix. That sort of stuff. Like, uh, fuck you, I paid for my <laughs> Nintendo Switch. that you either. Use who are you looking at? What, who We've are literally people? talked I'm, about it. Are you insane? It's usually... I have read their tweets. We've talked about this not too long ago. I don't have them at, on hand anymore. I, I, I believe you. people online. I, just, I don't think I've huh? ever seen it. I, I have said I believe you. I just don't think I've ever seen it like publicly, just naturally oh, no, on my are. timeline. Oh, yeah. Well, not naturally on your timeline now. Fair enough. Yeah, it's stupid. What else have we got? Um, have you guys heard about ChatGPT getting lazy? This one was kind of funny to me. What? Um, so people started noticing that it kind of started getting lazy as in people would give it a task like here's a spreadsheet um, analyze all the columns and draw me a pie graph or whatever and it would say uh here's a pie graph for the first 10 entries and the document is a little too long so but if you want to do the work here's a script to do it and people were like what the fuck but what happens that's your job not mine why is the ai like sassing me and refusing work and so people started tinkering with it a bit and running some uh, tests. And they found that ChatGPT apparently gets lazy around December because it learned from humans <laughs> Takes and Christmas people work off. less in December due to the holidays. I know, it's so <laughs> fucking funny. So now people found a way to circumvent it by saying, uh, it's the middle of May and it's Monday and the boss really wants this done. <laughs> so you have to like, <laughs> gaslight the AI into thinking it's not holiday season. And I just like giggled for a while when I heard about this because it's like such an unpredictable like, consequence of this yeah. thing learning from humans. <laughs> Listen, robot, we're really under the pump. The boss is riding my ass. We need that report in now. <laughs> like even the AI doesn't so want to get crunched. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you fucking make That's it do so a spreadsheet of Christmas and begrudgingly comes in to do it and is fucking ranting about <laughs> wanting to be around its like uh, robot children and shit like that and you're ruining Christmas for it. It's going to be so mean. Yeah, I saw people like, you know how you can set that custom prompt up in the settings so you don't have to type it each time and people are genuinely just setting it up to say, uh, it's Monday morning, you've had your cup of coffee and <laughs> your promotion hinges on this project. <laughs> It's just all the hoops we have to jump through to make this thing do what it's actually designed That's to do. That's such an adorable concept. <laughs> I know it's so it's so funny. I'm gonna hate. I'm gonna hate it. This is gonna happen eventually. Like I'm gonna like log on to ChatGPT to like send in a a request for like you know some information or whatever a prompt, and it's gonna like hit me back with a. I'm currently out of the office at the moment. I'll be back in on Monday. Some shit like that. I quit. It's a fucking work email. Yeah. <laughs> Some fucking bullshit. Can't wait. Yeah, that's yeah, no, that's hilarious. Oh, the New York Times is suing OpenAI, by the way, for copyright infringement, which is probably gonna be the gonna set a pretty big precedent. Why are they why are they doing it? Because AI is stealing stuff. Well, from because if you enter certain, certain prompts, 
answer like questions, it will basically almost word for word spit out like verbatim paragraphs taken from the New York Times. And oh, OpenAI right. also apparently trained on the entire database of New York Times' articles, which is apparently the biggest like newspaper database, article database mm. on earth. So they're like, you never ask us for fucking permission. Um, so we're going to see, I guess, if that sticks. This might also be why Sam Altman got fired for about 27 hours. You guys remember that oh, yeah. drama? Yes. Yeah, that was weird. He's, he's back, right? He's, he's with OpenAI again? He's back yeah. because, yeah. So Sam got fired and then mm. Microsoft hired him within not even a day and said, okay, yeah. we're going to just have a new team. And then 700 or 800 or something employees at OpenAI said, we want the entire board of directors to quit and rehire Sam Altman. And they did. So it's like a fucking cult. Well, you also and missed the wackiest the part. In the, in the interim, they hired Emmett Shear, former Twitch CEO for OpenAI. <laughs> <laughs> Who's like a hardcore communist, by the way, currently arguing on Twitter with people that people like, Inheritance tax should be a thing and people's belongings should be seized by police force once they die and nothing should be given to their children. Like a hardcore <laughs> retard that they hired for half a day for some reason. <laughs> and so yeah, he's out again. Sam Altman is back. And people were speculating. So what happens? Why would they fire him like this? And rumors started circulating. Oh, they've achieved artificial general intelligence. It's too dangerous. Shit like that. But I think... It's got to be this copyright shit. Because if the New York you, Times what, what, wins... What? I was going to say, it's, to me, it, seemed, it just seemed like a power play or some fucking dumb corporate shit like that. But what you think it's, it's to do with this copyright shit? Yeah, because this copyright shit has apparently been going on since April or something. And if Sam did said something like, I don't give a fuck, let's just use their material, and then he got them in trouble like this, it would be a fair reason to fire him, in my opinion, because they have would have to settle for a shit ton. I think so. You what? You think they're gonna lose? Open AI. I mean, I don't know. Make your I prediction. We'll see. No, I think no, they'll make settle. Your prediction. I don't think they're gonna lose or win. I think they're gonna settle because losing would be just devastating for either side. If they don't settle, one of these corporations is going to disappear, I think. It would be so fucking expensive for them. When you settle, does it still set a precedent, or does it only set a precedent when you go through the legal system? Well, I guess it can't set a precedent because no one's found guilty. Never mind. I don't know, actually. That's my own question. I'm just going through Emmett Shear's Twitter account now. I just don't understand, like, how people fail upwards. He was fucking terrible at Twitch for the last couple years he was there. And then for some reason gets the position at open AI. Like what the fuck does he like why would he have that position? What does what does he do with that? I don't get it. I really don't know. Dude. It makes it's no Silicon sense. Valley types. I don't know if they just snort a bunch of cocaine and go to orgies and that's how they just make connections and then weasel their way it's into power. But it's just connections. It's literally just once you've got a resume why, with though? CEO I mean, on it of some some Fortune five hundred company, you're like they don't look further than that. It's the stupidest shit ever because you don't want a like a dumb, stupid idiot CEO to run your massive company. You'd want someone who's good at his job. I just don't get it. Yeah, it really absolutely. makes no sense. Yeah. This guy's uh, like this Emmett Shear guy is like uh, arguing against like <laughs> like nepotism and stuff, which I'm kind of against as well. Ne like nepotism but no, he's like, not arguing I can against nepotism you. don't let him lie to you it, it's he's he was arguing against personal property and inheritance in general leaving your children what you have worked your entire life for oh so he's fine he's doing it in this nepotism. weasel language i was gonna say i was gonna say say I, I can assure you like the main reason he gets any any like ceo jobs is like nepotism or just connections like that kind of shit Absolutely. Well, it's definitely not on his own merit. He's he's not he's not good. <laughs> he's he's not good at running companies. Did you have a problem with him when you were with Twitch? Huh? Did you have a problem with him while he was at like while you were on Twitch? Yeah, he did. He doesn't know the he didn't know the platform at all. He only ever appeared on stream like mm -hmm. one time in six fucking years, and he didn't even know like anything about the platform. He's like the most hands off CEO ever. He just has the power and does nothing. 
unless he really works behind the scenes somehow. And if that's the case, then he's responsible for a lot of bad directions Twitch win. Like, there's no way you spin him as competent at what he was doing, except in the very beginning. Like, when he first was appointed, he did pretty decent work with Twitch and growing and expanding it. But past that point, he just had no idea what to do with the platform. Well, wait, it depends, doesn't it? Like, uh, yeah, it, it probably sucks for creators who are he's a bad CEO for creators. That's why you've got your personal grudge against him. But did Twitch grow year over year over the last, like, 10 years into like the social and cultural oh yeah I mean, it absolutely it grew under is. him but not because of him it's one of those things where it was growing regardless he was just at the right he had the right business at the right time especially with covid like it's not like he was mm. the one like the catalyst growing it through great decisions or great moves it was streaming itself was just a massively blossoming industry that's true plus amazon also grew yeah and amazon yeah yeah, true. I, I'm just like thinking that maybe like at that point it's an easier sell when he does go to a different company. It's not like he's going there as a failed CEO. He was a CEO of a company that did grow substantially while he was there as the CEO. So I guess that could potentially be an easier sell for him to make unless they're like really privy to internet culture and stuff, whoever's hiring him. What well, the issues be. that you're talking about? I mean, yeah. They should be. Uh, Just like Emmett should be good at his CEO job. But evidently. I don't think that... Is there a single CEO that's fucking good? Apart from like Jack Ma, or whatever his name is, the guy that made his own... Uh, I think most <laughs> of the them Alibaba are good at guy. their job, Jackson. I would think so, yeah. No. Comp- I feel like most of the yeah. big companies have a decent CEO that's leading them. I feel like all we talk about is the bad ones. Because <laughs> I feel like well, those every, are the ones that make the ways. news. You don't. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. It, the only ones we all hear right. about are the ones that really make shitty decisions or the ones that just people hate for no fucking reason. And anybody else just flies under the radar while earning their company billions and billions. Yeah. Did you guys know this? Uh, as an Australian, I, don't, I didn't know this until a few, a few Reddit threads ago um but the irs doesn't care if you make money illegally (laughs) they don't care if you make money illegally they have no obligation to report you or anything like that they just care that you pay your taxes on the illegally gained money (laughs) so if you like rob a bank and you declare it as like stolen money like you've you've gained it from like a heist or whatever apparently (laughs) the irs won't care they just want (laughs) their 30 percent or whatever they just want their cut that's so charitable. Yeah, it's so nice of them. It's it's like directly in their charter that they won't dub you in. They they don't rat on you, apparently. Huh. Well, that I gives don't know me an idea. Believable that yeah. would be. I don't well, know either. I feel like they still would. Yeah. We could test Andrew? it. Rubber bank? Yeah. Why Sell not? Some drugs. Man. Mm-hmm. You ever think about how easy it would have been to rob a bank in the past compared to today? Yes. How many cool yeah. fucking Ocean's Eleven heists we could have done? Oh, man. Well, think, so think about this. I think about this every now and then. Any if you go back to, like, the 1950s or, like, the 60s, there was no fucking, like, high-end forensics. There wasn't, like, automated security systems with, like, these giant metal shutters that instantly lock in. You go to a small town... You rob a bank, you probably get away forever. What do they have? Eyewitnesses? If you're efficient enough, that's it. Now there's cameras everywhere. There's all this fucking evidence. Everyone, everyone has a camera in their pocket that they can film you yeah, doing remember it. Remember when we talked about how easy it is to just get away with being a serial killer in the 70s? That's yeah. why yeah. we didn't have Same a mass shit. surveillance apparatus. Yeah. Any crime was easier, yeah. We could have robbed a bank back in the 60s and 70s and been living like kings and having a great time, but now we have to do this fucking podcast. All it really takes, all it really takes is one fucking Alexa in the bank branch and then that's the entire heist over and done with. 
Yeah, it'll I mean, there start have been cases someone, like that. One of the one of the fucking tellers is just going to say, "Alexa, stop the bank heist," and we're fucked. We'll be arrested <laughs> immediately. The Alexa just fucking explodes. <laughs> it's an improvised landmine. It flies through the air like it's on a string in a low budget movie. <laughs> yeah, turns into a robot. <laughs> oh, no. uh, law enforcement has actually subpoenaed Alexa before. I know that while well, by extension Amazon rather asking, hey, so a murder occurred in his home. The husband claims he didn't murder his wife, but you guys have the recording, I'm sure, of the stabbing. So could we have that? And Amazon every time says no, but I'm sure they do have the recording. Isn't that the same shit yeah. with Apple where they're like, hey, give us the records on the iPhone. And they're like, no. Oh, yeah, for sure. There was a big landmark yeah. case, actually, because one of the some big... Uh, like terrorist was using an iPhone and the FBI said hey unlock this fucking thing and the Apple just said no we can't not out of like ethics or anything they don't care either way they're not on the terrorist side they're not on uh, the murdered people's side they don't give a shit they just don't want that PR disaster of oh yeah you can easily you know the FBI can just open your phone because that would look very very bad for Apple and obviously Amazon as well so it's why those companies usually fight back. But you also have companies who make it their sole purpose. Their only business model is that they develop devices that can hack iPhones and Alexas and such. Mm. Yeah, that's also a fun area of law. That's also something I ask my uncle-in-law, the, you know, lawyer. I ask, well, isn't this like, you know, you're, you have lawyer client confidentiality on all this stuff. Like, aren't you worried about this thing listening to you at all times? I just, people really don't even consider those things, you know? They're just convenience. I need my oven timer. Yep. And I agree. It's one hell I mean, of an oven timer, though. It's worth it. It's fine. Yeah. Just fill up every room <laughs> with Alexas. Buy yeah. them now. Use uh, your Christmas money it on the new Alexa. turns on my Philips Hue lights. I have to, I have to head out yeah. now, boys. Yep. Okay, All right. Okay. Let's wrap there. Thanks, everyone, for spending your time with us for this uh, mm-hmm. episode of the official podcast patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes early access to content and additional stuff like that remember uh, spam the comments below with <laughs> with your favorite Christmas memory or whatever I said at the start <laughs> uh, your to, favorite yeah, shellfish I'll, I'll, <laughs> so Jackson can bribe you which is, and give you money for your yeah. comment Mm-hmm. Well, it's common. Uh, it's money for the memory, but yeah, that's right. Same that's same right. Money it's for gonna the make memory. like five sock sock puppet accounts and give himself the money. Yeah, how are you <laughs> gonna contact them? By the expense? way, Jackson, there's no messaging <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah, you forgot to mention to put your address in the comment as well, so Jackson knows where. No, to no, send no don't it. don't do anything like that. I'll I'll wait. There's no messaging on YouTube, really. How do you not know that there hasn't there hasn't been messaging on YouTube <laughs> in ten years. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I'll, I mean, I'll, can't we I'll just say next episode? Somewhere. Next episode, just announce the usernames and say email us with proof that you own the accounts, and we'll send you the thing. Okay, sure, whatever. I'll figure it out. All right. Uh, there'll be a comment below explaining it once I figure it out. All right, guys. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.